Since the beginning of civilization, and probably before, humans have been seeking different ways in which to alter their consciousness. It seems, so far, our favorite way has been through drink. Mead, beer, sake, wine, every culture developed their own drink that helps provide an interesting look at the conditions that helped form those cultures. The American South is no different in this regard, as essentially, we started as an aggregate of people with vastly different experiences and cultures. We eventually developed into our own unique identity. With that unique identity came a unique drink, bourbon. Bourbon is a special drink. So special, in fact, that Kentucky named an entire county after it. And New Orleans named an entire street in honor of bourbon. Why is bourbon so special? Well, to answer that question, we have to go back roughly 480 million years to the Ordovician era. Today, when we think of Appalachia, we think beautiful rolling mountains. But Appalachia's roots are actually quite different. During this era, Appalachia was a tropical climate, complete with coral reefs and shallow seas. These conditions were literal breeding grounds for prehistoric shellfish and coral and other various sea creatures. Unfortunately for these guys though, and for reasons yet unknown to us, they all died out, and rather suddenly. The upside to this is that these poor creatures fossilized quite nicely into what we now call limestone. Which brings us back to modern times. The bluegrass region of Kentucky, which is the site of this mass extinction, is responsible for producing roughly 90% of America's bourbon. You might be wondering what these two things have to do with one another. Well, limestone that is eroded by groundwater is really good at bringing up the pH of said water. This in turn helps with the fermentation process, or the part that makes it alcoholic. Limestone also has the added benefit of filtering iron particles out, which is good because if you ask any whiskey brewer, they'll tell you that iron can ruin your batch. So where's the problem at? Well, there's a fairly limited accessible supply of this limestone water, and if you don't live in Kentucky, good luck finding it. Even if you do live in Kentucky, most of the accessible limestone water has been tapped into by the big bourbon producers. Maker's Mark owns roughly 700 acres of land around the lake that they use for their product. The land is closely monitored. Everything from the local wildlife down to the flora is taken into account to make sure that they have a good, pure limestone water for their product. So what about the small town bourbon craftsman who hasn't been brewing since 1958? What do they do? Chances are, they probably can't afford to buy and tend their own personal Garden of Eden. The good news is, however, is that they really don't have to. Why not, you might ask? Well, the answer is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is the process by which pressurized water is pushed through a semi-permeable membrane, whose pores are big enough to allow for water to pass through, but not so big that it will allow for contaminants and other nasties like iron through. The process uses a water purification machine to store and push the water through a man-made filter, kind of like your Brita at home. Water flows from the area of most pressure to the area of least pressure. And as the water flows, it passes through various filters until it settles to the bottom as clean, pure drinking water. So essentially, these water purifying machines do the same thing that limestone does. They filter the water. Now, this might sound like an unreliable process. After all, Mother Earth does it best, right? But actually, the process is so effective that the U.S. Navy uses it to make seawater drinkable while their ships are underway. So the process works, but it must be expensive, right? Not necessarily. Water purifiers for the home can run you anywhere from $150 to $300. So the buy-in isn't exactly expensive. And during Prohibition, bootleggers even made their own purifiers. Bourbon is one of my favorite drinks. And while I like big brands, like Maker's Mark, I'd much prefer to enjoy a glass of bourbon that came from a craftsman who takes pride in their work. And while big brands' monopolization of the already limited limestone water may make the outlook seem grim to small-time producers, modern purification techniques will ensure that the whiskey doesn't stop flowing anytime soon.